Hello there, you're watching Sports Tonight Live, the home of opinionated, passionate, but intelligent sporting debate. Coming up, the best bits of the week. Whatever you think of them, make sure you get in touch with your views at any time on Twitter, at Sports Tonight TV. Just before the uh, break, we were talking to Perry about his selection, who he'd like to see playing for England. Um, now we have a right of reply by Mr Wayne Veazey of Goal.com. Yeah, I'm going to get my red pen out and highlight where Perry's gone wrong. Um, in your I, opinion? Yeah, in, in my opinion. opinion. Yes. It, I mean, actually, the, the front six is, is, is quite reasonable. Um, I don't know if Zahar is entitled to start since he wasn't in the original squad. I'd go with Ashley Young out on the left. Wil Wilshire Gerrard, yeah, absolutely, they're the best two. Would you just have Welbeck with, on his own, would you, or what? No, c cleverly. Oh, cleverly. cleverly um, I'd, go with, I'd go with Raheem Sterling as, as well. I think cleverly well, sort Tim of Cleverly plays, pl passes sideways. Yeah. who never actually creates any chances, never takes initiative. I love to look at Tom Cleverley's stats for someone who supposedly plays the free sort of role, mm. the creative role. How many goals he created and how many goals he scored? Sometimes, well, uh, when he was at Leicester on loan, he scored a lot of goals. I think, well, that's in the championship. Yeah, that is. Uh, along, alongside alongside um, Carrick, he's been quite effective for Manchester United in bigger games. He's, I think he's developing. He's not developing quickly. I don't think he's a superstar, but I think he's solid. And um, in terms of the back five, I'd go with the best available back five. I think England should pick for the first 45 minutes. I think they should pick. Well, what do you learn? Like, it, well, well, this, a, a, but to have international friendlies, everybody saying we've got to have these friendlies because we have to learn because mm. we don't know what these players. Let me will let be. me let me just read out some of the tweets. It's a like high time I did um, at Sports Tonight TV. Thank you for everyone who's already tweeted us loads to get through here. David Bomb says, I think friendlies against minnows are pointless, but an away game against Sweden with our injury list is a brilliant test. Um, we'll I, see. Yeah, it, it's not competitive. Perry, you said to me, what do we learn? Well, if you put Hart, Jagielka and Cahill together, that's a back three that's that's probably going to be round there or thereabouts in February for the next But you know already know what they can do. You, well, you've seen that they can. Um, K. Hills play for England. You know, well, they can not that often. Jake, we're not, we're not often. We're not talking. We're not talking like sixty caps each together. Have we? You but know? for international friendlies, are nowhere near as pressurised as I think, qualifying I think games. Look good, at the Italy game. The Italy well, Mike McKenna has come up with a good point. He says the problem with this one is the timing. Even with the new ideas and new players, there are three months before our next competitive game. Like Brazil, I think, in February, isn't it? So what are we losing? Yeah, it's what. Well, it's in, it's in uh, against Brazil in February, is that? Yeah, that's a friendly. Next game, friendly but our next competitive game yeah, is not for Well, months. that's San Marino, so yeah. that's not exactly competitive, is it? Um, let's have a look. There's another one here. Um, what about Leon Osman, says Bren B, not in your team? Um, I don't understand the, the point of points. If you're Roy Hodgson, obviously, he's looking to qualify, and I get that. But if you go back to Germany, what they did, you go to Spain, what they did, they actually thought, right, we have to have a new remit now. Mm. And they got rid of older players. Now, the Leon Osman. The 21s was the is, basis yeah, exactly. of their Leon team, Osman has been excellent for Everton. I'm not saying he hasn't. But I don't see the future in, in Leon Osman. I just don't see the point of him being in there. But I, I don't Okay, so uh, in Doran, your team then, in your team. So Gerard's a sentimental hundredth cap. No, no, he's not said no because you go for he's your young team. No, no, he's, no, he's in there on performance Liverpool. He's in there because you he's said. You, you said well, you need. Well, but there's no one else. Well, your argument there is it's cleverly. You no, are, no, I don't rate him. No, I just said I wouldn't if have Parker Tom Cleverley in my if team. Parker was rate, fit. Would you play him? Was Scott Parker? If was Scott fit? Parker was not fit. now. No, I think no. I, I'd say thank you, Scott. You did brilliantly um, when you came in and played for England. You sort of play we needed at the time, but now we've got to be looking to play a different way. All depends. Again, I think that game available. against Germany when we lost so heavily in the World Cup, I, I just but think... He, he, he looked he was, like he was, he was struggling. He was very much a Fabio Capello player, wasn't he? Capello, it just, Capello to me, he was him. so slow. He I just thought him. he cannot possibly... He him we're never going to win anything Roy with that. Has, has picked 47 players. It's 47 so I far. I think that shows... Roy Hodgson, everybody knows, is 4-4-2. Like if you speak to anybody who was at Fulham, you speak to anyone at West yeah. Brom. Changed and he's, Italy. And he's in the friendly. We were like Brazil, you know, doing tick-attack football. Just like watching Brazil. We are not going to progress as a nation with Roy Hodgson in charge of the national side. You have to have someone who's brave, who, and we said about younger players, the advantage of young players is they play with no fear. They play with no yeah, fear. Perry, Perry, just, Perry, just, you know, the, uh, Sterling, 13 matches for Liverpool. Wilshire, three matches in 17 months. Right. Young has just come back off but if it was Welbeck point, doesn't play for Manchester United. Zaha's plays in the Championship. Bertrand's played six games for Chelsea this season. Jakes has played about 12 games for Arsenal. Corker's... Have you seen this Progressing sport? well. Forced to plays in Scotland. You know, there's no way in a million years this team would ever achieve anything. Doran in Sullivan, no, I just said this. Doran I Sullivan says... This I think they're a complete waste of time. This, this looks That's like why a team... That's why in the squad. But if they're there, then play them. It's a goal. This time it's gone to Sweden. They're ahead. Kenny. I am... 
Like I said, my premonition about Joel Hart at this level has come true. A 35 yard free, yard free kick has gone like a grass cutter past England's so called number one. What a what an absolute disgrace. Good shot, though. It was a hat great trick. shot. It's a hat trick for Ibrahimovic. He's, he's probably going to be the hero, but really, Joe Hart, England's number one. F a shot from 35 yards, England's number one. He's going to save it, isn't he, really? No, he we didn't. Should, we should say that in the midst of all that mayhem, uh, Wilfred Zaha has come on, Kenny. Yeah, Wilfred Zaha has come on. So, so he's got he's good his cap, so he's not... Like I said, I don't think he's going to do much in this time. Hopefully, there'll be some injury time for him, maybe to make a pretty impression. But unbelievable! I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. Sweden did not look like look like winning this game at all, especially with the start we had in the second half. But ever since we've had the substitutions, Sweden has started to press the play. They're looking very dangerous. It's like Ibrahimovic. Everyone calls him world class, and you know who am I to argue with the majority? But but really and truly, we're just paying him so much respect. He's no Messi, he's no Ronaldo, and we're just, we're just terrified of him. Oh, that's Actually terrified. Well, I'm not, I'm not he's, saying... not, he's not Messi or Ronaldo, and I've, I've been down on him many times before because oh. he's not performed, but tonight, but you've if, got to say, but if you look at his, fantastic. In, I know, if you look at his international goal score for Sweden, it's, it's nearly one in two. Yeah. He's won every uh, title in every major apart uh, ours. league, apart from ours. So um, he plays for Barcelona, he goes to AC Milan, he goes to Inter Milan, and obviously he's in, in PSG. And he, 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 he has to be world class yeah. because he does. He's done it on the international stage. Well, everyone pays so much money for him each time. They and, can't all be wrong. And his teams yeah. win titles. Yeah. Oh, oh no! That is Sweden of oh, 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 He's rubbish. He's rubbish. Oh, and Ibrahimovic, who is absolutely oh, no oh, good oh, goalkeeper, no. again, oh, has scored oh, straight. No. Finish that. That's Kenny. a brilliant goal. Oh, That's no. a brilliant goal. Oh no! That is an absolutely brilliant goal. Oh no! Can I? Every time, any, next time any, I say that Imran Hibbert is, n is not world class, please tell me to shut up. <laughs> shut up! So tell <laughs> what me happened? to shut up. <laughs> Joe Hart, the biggest liability this side of, this side oh of the room. Oh my game. God! He's just down the head around. Ibrahimovic, back a goal, overhead kick, unbelievable. His fourth goal, oh my. Oh my That's God! I don't know. Goal. I'm lost for words here. What? Joe Hart, you liability. You have to say, that is one of the greatest goals I've ever that is, seen. That is incredible. And oh! you know what normally happens? Ibrahimovic is six foot three, right? So the athleticism that he's shown to actually overhead scissor kick it and lob Joe Hart and the two centre halves at the same time. And it's not as if he's in front of the goal, he's on the angle. He's, on, he's out towards, put 10 yards in from the top. He side. scores them goals. All the time. He, Trust me, he scores he, them. What about the one he scored in the Euros, the volley? Yeah, but, uh, to be fair. The side volley. You that, know, incredible goal again. He does that sort of thing all the time. Down. By the way, Joe Hart hasn't, when Kenny Ken said it in the first 10 minutes, he's, he's come for crosses, he's missed crosses, he's missed punches. His decision making has been very poor. For, like, it doesn't mean to say he's not a brilliant goalkeeper, but tonight he hasn't been mentally right at all. I just wonder whether he's, he's not. He's not secure with the people in front of him and he's worried about them because he never makes... I mean, he makes might make one of these for City, but not four I know, in a game. I know, but having said that, though, and if you see the way that Lescott and company have been playing at Man City, Joe Hart has been outstanding yeah. because he's kept him in. He hasn't been... He's, his concentration level's no, been really poor tonight. Been, he's has. been all over. But that is... You, I think you're right. Without exaggerating, that's one of the that best goals I've ever seen. Goals. It is, definitely. It's do you know what? Overhead, an overhead scissors kick... On the volley, obviously. On the volley... From 30 yards and out? Do you know what? As, as, he's, as he's hit it, right, he knows he's got a chance because he's got such a good connection. Because yeah. if you watch him in, as he's in the air, he's actually trying to turn around and look to see where the ball's gone. It's like a goal, you know, when you're a golfer, you think, I've hit a great shot there, and you look to see where it's gone. That's exactly. Did he get booked for taking his shirt off? I tell you, I wouldn't matter if he got sent off. It wouldn't make no difference, would it? So it's Sweden 4, England 2. When was the last time a player scored four goals against England? Uh, I don't know. Butler, do you know? I don't think it's ever happened. Really? I don't, I don't, I don't think anyone's ever scored Well, that's his story, you know, as it should be when they're opening their new stadium. And it will be Roy Hodgson's first defeat. Let's find out the agony of Matthew Moore, the Northern Ireland uh, supporter. They're up against Azerbaijan. It's a World Cup qualifier. They were losing. And in the torture chamber, what's happening now? I'm actually, I don't want to watch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I just brought up on the screen there, 75% of possession overall the entire game and you know they brought on our our savior well our past savior david healy <laughs> as a third substitution to try and boost the forward line but 
what what else can they do? I mean, they're missing chance after chance after chance. It, it, the goal's not coming. Right, let's go to Matthew and see if the agony is over yet. Matthew? <laughs> 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 that, that sums it up. <laughs> Six minutes injury time. Um, just had a bit of a brawler on the pitch. Um, David Hillies ended up getting booked. Uh, Azerbaijan are literally throwing themselves on the ground to kill time here, and Northern Ireland on the attack again. Uh, what else can I say? It's been one of those nights where we've had at least. Hang on, hang on. No, sorry. Nor chance sorry. missed again. The chances we've had. It's like watching schoolboy football. Surely not, Matthew. Yes, David Healy has come. <laughs> <laughs> David Healy. He's seeking yards out. David Healy right through the bottom of the wall, right into the what the left hand corner. The goalkeeper left stranded. One one. I'd say referee's going to play maybe an hour, a minute or two because it's more stoppages. David Healy, 36th goal for Northern Ireland tonight. Hopefully we can get an hour late one here, but he's the ball has finally hit the back of the net. As I understand it, uh, you were interested to talk about racism in sport, and it's one of the reasons why Peter's here. Um, well, I think what's interesting about what Peter said, um, and I actually feel like I agree with him on quite a lot of the points, but I think with regard to today's issue of institutional racism in football, I think before we start talking about that, we probably need to define our terms. So uh, given that it's Peter who's used the term, I'd be interested if he could define what he means by institutional racism, and then after that, we can kind of talk about whether it exists or not. Peter. Well, the, the term originates from Lord Scarman in the 1981 reports on the Brixton riots. It was then coined by Lord Macpherson when he addressed racism and institutional racism in the Metropolitan Police. And his description is, is appropriate. It's policies and, and practices, unwitting or otherwise, which lead to a differential treatment within an organisation on grounds of race, nationality, colour, ethnic origin, etc. And I think when we look at the FA at all levels, we see a board where I think there was the first woman elected, appointed, after 143 years, the only person of colours I'm aware on the board. If you look down to how they record racial incidents, these are just examples because I'm yeah. limited in time, um, that the FA record racial incidents not on the McPherson definition, which is now 14 years old, but on the basis of if an official at the level of the county FA think it is such. And that really is way behind what most institutions do. I'm pleased to hear Peter sort of define institutional in that, in that respect because I think a lot of people, and this is probably one of the problems with delivering the term institutional, institutionally racist, when you, when you talk about an organisation like that, what does it mean to the general public? And it doesn't mean the precise definition that you've just given. And that's partly the danger in which it's delivered, which I think well, a lot of the angst is around the way in which it's been delivered. And you know, I, I was speaking to people today who were uh, former colleagues of mine who have left the FA and, and feel quite honestly, they feel affronted by it because of the lack of definition. My understanding was that what you were saying was, was exactly that, and that is that um, this isn't about necessarily saying all the guys who operate in the organisation, that their motivation is that they are racist, but that's how it's taken and that's how it's read. And that's what I think is probably at issue here. Because if you start to make statements like that, which go out to the general public, you're using, you're using the media, you're on the television here, you're using the press, then the people who read it will take that view. And I think if you start to do that, then start, that starts to make it divisive. And that is the issue. With regard to um, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're not saying that the people are racist. There, are, there is evidence that would lead you to believe that there's, if you like, I could call it systemic racism, Ooh, yeah. potentially. And if you look at the Stephen Lawrence issue, um, for me, that was the big thing. It was to move on and look at the systemic racism issues. So things that happen almost inadvertently as a consequence. I've been in football for 20 years and on, uh, I played my, I was on five years on the, on the FA, uh, on, at the FA. I have not seen institutional racism. I've seen and heard race, racist comments. I've not actually come across a racist footballer or indeed any member of the council. And I was there five years um, in fact, what I did see was a constant drive 
towards improving. When uh, you're saying that somebody is a racist um, on a football pitch, is he a racist? The comment's racist, but let me give you an example. I believe racism is premeditated. That is, you, you are, a, if you premeditate, mm. you are a racist. There's no question in my mind. If you write me a letter calling me uh, uh, an unpleasant uh, racist comment, that you are a racist. No question in my mind about that at all. But are, are you a racist if in a combat, in, 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 in a, in, on a football pitch, and somebody kicks you and you turn around and you instantly no, the, say the, something the, terrible sorry, the, 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 and then apologise? No, you can't. I, no, I, I, it's I, a I, moment I, I, of I, I, terrible I think that's pain. A major I understand point. what you're saying, but Christian, for me, it's not acceptable. Okay, okay. It's, it's, I, I, I understand what you're saying, I, but, but it's not I'm acceptable. I, but I, not think, at all. I also think from the FA's perspective, um, that's not an acceptable position mm. either. To be, a casual racist comment, or not, and they've no. said that. No. They've, no. They've, no. They've stood I, by I that. mean, I think we, I we get to too yeah. cut yeah. up about comments. For the victim, and there is a victim, and we talked to some victims who were 14 years old, 13 years old, and they kept their cool. They didn't abuse back. They didn't fight. I would have fought, I think, as a kid, as a 14-year-old, and we had to. Yeah. That's how we dealt with it. So, but the, the abuse give is... Give me a 15-second summary. For, for I'm the so victim. sorry, Peter. We're sorry, coming into a commercial break. Mm. Just give me a 15-second summary. For, for the victim, quantify the a racist as For the victim, it doesn't David matter. Just, for that split second, it doesn't matter. We don't care. The impact on the victim is a thing that you have to remember. I'm not interested in judging that person's whole character. That comment is enough. Meant or not meant doesn't matter. Um, it's just to just to get sort of your reaction on the Rome derby. Do you think, of course, there was a, it was a terrible moment for Daniele De Rossi. He literally just outright punched Stefano Mauri and was uh, red carded. This is after he's been allowed to play in the position that he's so coveted under Zeman, you know, in that sort of central midfield role. Regista. Regista, that's what we like to call it. But this is what it is. Is he really a Zeman player? He's not someone who makes his runs from midfield. He's not really a playmaker. There's no really well, position for him mo there. Most players are not Zeman players, certainly not in the long term. He, he takes so much out of them that after one year, two years, three years, usually the players just hold their hand up and say, you know, we, so we, can't, like Mourinho, we can't anymore. I think it's worse than Mourinho because I think Mourinho makes sort of um, makes adjustment, adjustments for human nature. I think Zeman is more like Bielsa, who in an ideal right. world would have robots playing for him that he can program exactly where they do, what they do, how much they run. And, uh, you know, Roma traditionally, but also, you know, a couple of years ago, was a completely different side. So of course, uh, yeah. there will be conflict and uh, I'm not sure they can be resolved, which begs the interesting question if we'll see a future for. De Rossi in the Foda Giallo Rossi, or they have to go and uh, apply straight somewhere else. What could be more exciting than Sweden? What is it with them scoring four goals? And did Zlatan just prove that there's no one better than him except for maybe Ronaldo and Messi? Ibrahimovic obviously was spectacular. Was, was spectacular. He was in the mood, and uh, he's um, he's finally done the thing that is the true mark of every great player in the world. He scored against an English team. Oh. So now uh, <laughs> oh, I his, love his that. last uh, you know his last uh, doubt exactly. uh, has disappeared. Banished. But he's back to another problem, which is that uh, the accusation that he only. Um, turns out against really terrible, terrible teams and oh, is a okay. flat track bully. It's only, a, it's only a friendly, right? He was asked after the game, how would you rate your performances for Sweden and from 1 to 10? And he said 10. Do you not think that, you know, I mean, everyone seems to dislike him. Do you think the fact that he is so confident, a la Ronaldo, is what makes people sort of not big him up, let's just say? Confidence is one thing. I think arrogance is, is another. And, Doesn't uh, he have the right to be arrogant? He might have the right, but it's still his choice. And, you know, there are people, all sorts of people have the right to be arrogant, but chose to be humble still and chose to be much more sociable and uh, don't always have to put themselves into the limelight. And I think Cristiano Ronaldo this week at, uh, in a CNN interview talked about an image problem, which perhaps has held him back when it comes to individual awards like the Ballon d'Or. Now, you know, if you want to talk about Ibrahimovic having a shot, I don't think he has because, you know, he is seen by too many people as someone who's only playing his own very individual game. Brilliant when it comes off. I think less brilliant for the rest of the team when it doesn't because he is a guy who does what's right for Slatan, not always what's right for the team. And I do want to get a couple of updates uh, in uh, just right at the start of this second half. Uh, Lee, how has it started?
Well, QPR started quite lively, and then they've just put, uh, they've, they've made a couple of changes. Mackie's now on. Then the QPR just put a cross in, and the Southampton goalkeeper come out. I mean, he was he was in no man's land. He didn't have joking. to do it. And then Hoylet scored two one. Hoylet has scored. Goodness me, we've timed that perfectly, didn't we? Hoylet has scored. What a huge goal that is at Loftus Road. Yeah, can you put a bit more oomph into it or Goodness what? Goodness me, what a massive goal that is. So that is squeaky you know, Hoylet has time. scored absolutely that is squeaky it, that, time. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, the whole momentum could have, could shift now towards Queen's Park Rangers. This is what they did last year. You remember, their, their whole season turned round on the back of them scoring two or three late goals yes. at home to Liverpool. Nigel Could Atkins well be will be going ballistic as well because uh, the goalkeeper coming out and making a ricket, uh, he will be absolutely furious, as will Roberto Di Matteo. Let's go to the Hawthorns. Oh, we'll come to you in a second, David. Let's go to the Hawthorns. Let's go to the Hawthorns. Daniel Quinn's waiting to speak to us. Daniel. Yeah, I was from a 2 one lead. Uh, Billy Jones' cross has been headed in at the near post by Peter Odomingi. Great header, great cross. 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one, indeed. The shock is on at the Hawthorns. Let's go to Anfield. David Mears watching. Liverpool against Wigan. Who scored? Uh, have a guess. Have a little guess. Have a little guess. Luis Come on. Suarez. Come on, have a guess. Gerard. Luis Suarez. Absolutely, 100%. Give that man a dinner. Spalled down the right-hand side. Standing in. Pulls it back. Suarez, what up? One nil. That's what Sterling does. Yes, in fairness, he played it in perfect for him. Great goal. Thanks, David. Jess Martin, Reading, Everton. Goal. We're at one all here. It seems like at halftime, Brian McDermott put a rocket up the boys because Reading have come up. They've come out firing. They're pressing. I wonder what the correct scoreline market is looking like in the City game. Yeah, I mean, probably six or seven nil looking decent runners now. Five and five nil. We did, I said I thought under, under three and a half goals at the big decent bet in that game. I was rather smug after 40 minutes and now suddenly five comes straight away. City is sending a big marker down. But Villa, don't don't give up on them. I think they're going to they've got a big win in them in the next two or three weeks. I mean, look the Man City and the Liverpool game now suspended as far as a betting concerned. We'll give you a little bit up there on some more games with the betting markets and it's just a bit, a bit more. in the championship. <laughs> Burnley down to 10 men early on. Kieran Trippier sent off professional foul. Johnny Jackson then as his penalty saved. You think Chrissy Powell must be thinking it's not going to be my day. Well it is. Charlton go 1-0 up away at Burnley. Bet Butler as you know he loves doing that. Really do apologise. I'm going to hand it back to you. No, I've, uh, it's the first time I've been interrupted by Flash today, but I'm sure it won't be last. But this is oh. the man who's been interrupted most, and he loves it when you. You, you love it when that. Oh, it's, it's your favourite part of the show. Five every, five times every week. I'm getting used to it now. Definitely, I could hear him in the middle of the night. Just go. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, Mad City. I did think they would, they would, they would destroy Villa today. That's proved to be the case because if you look at the score lines in the last three times these sides have met at the Etihad, it was four one, three 0 and four 0 So there's there's history there. Swansea, of course, one 0 up against Newcastle. Meet you again with a header. That's his fourth header so far this season. That's more than any other player in the Premier League and more than 12 Premier League teams altogether. So extraordinary stuff there. Suarez, like we said, 12. Um, he's, he's either scored or assisted in 12 of the 16 goal! goals. Goal! Liverpool Championship. Play. Massive goal for Gianfranco Zona at Vicarage Road. Sorry, Chrissy Graham. I know I do it in the middle of the night, but I have to do it when someone scores. Watford 2, 10-man Wolves 1. Gianfranco Zola climbing the table. Indeed he is. Let's go back to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll get you.